Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, a Cadence Independent Media production. Today we are here to talk about coded reso heads. I use coded Rezo heads all the time, and I didn't really realize that it was as uncommon of a practice as it is until people started commenting about it. And I really like the way that they kind of calm the overtones down a little bit and round the tone out and offer actually a little bit of sustain, I don't know, squashing of the tone a little bit too. It makes for just like a tighter sound overall and a little less brightness, uh, which is great for high tunings and also for just kind of like rooms where you don't want that much projection. And thanks again to Promark by Diderio, our presenting sponsor, for helping make this possible. Two-headed toms have gone through a lot of evolution in the 20th century. Um, they went from basically like imported toms from China where the heads were permanently affixed to the drum and there was no tunability to tunable batter side and tacked on rezo side and calf and then to plastic and different things. Um, but somewhere along the line, clear became standard basically for the resonant side. And... That has also led people to a lot of different avenues of trying to squash some of those overtones and get a more controlled tom sound when just swapping to a coated head can actually do the trick. You don't even need to change the thickness of the head that you choose. Your head choice can really influence the sound you get at the drum before you get into miking and any kind of EQ or compression or anything else that might be happening or even just the mics in a live situation. Um, and this is also a sound that you can use. I mean, I, I guess I think of it when I'm going for kind of like a vintage sound or, or something that I want to blend a little bit more, but modern guys with punchy tones like Benny Greb comes to mind as somebody that uses them on both sides in thoroughly modern, low, you know, growly, expressive tunings. Just like a lot of the things that we've gone through here um, for modifying tone, this is a really quick one, and it's also kind of handy because you can interchange your rezo head fairly easily depending on what you're doing rather than getting into different kinds of muffling or other things that are more invasive or maybe you know affect the head in a way that you can't undo. I also find that when I'm going for extremes of tuning, whether it's really high or really low, um, this actually gets me sounds that I can use a little bit easier because in both of those scenarios, you're trying to get tone out of a drum that may be fighting you if it's tuned really high and it wants to choke out or if it's tuned really low and it's starting to kind of get flappy, that kind of thing. Um, the added mass that having a coated head provides and just the general way that it focuses the tone is really great in both of those scenarios and helps to bring the fundamental out of the drum. First, let's listen to what these drums sound like with coated G2s on the top and clear G1s on the bottom. All right, now we're gonna switch over to coded G1s on the bottom and make sure you stay tuned to the end where we're gonna do a sort of quick back-to-back -back comparison.
So it's pretty clear that this is both a subtle change and also kind of a dramatic change depending on which part of the sound you're listening to. The overtones are different, the fundamental is different, the control in the latter is really pleasant and actually it feels different to hit um, than the previous one. It's really fascinating and the actual uh, physical sensation of the attack on the drum when you're connecting with it is different because there's a different amount of momentum coming back up from that bottom head and that's going to translate to how it feels to hit, um, particularly at lower dynamics, but also as it starts to go higher. I feel like with that uh, coated head on the bottom, particularly in the floor tom, uh, it has kind of a higher dynamic ceiling before it starts to kind of choke out in terms of like, you know, this mid-range tuning. I can hit it as hard as I want with that head on there, and I'm still getting more tone out of it, and there's a growth after it rather than the hit being the height of it and then kind of going down from there. Also, if you are a person who likes to use more than two toms, three, four, five, however many, uh, figuring out ways to get good tone out of them without them sustaining over the top of each other uh, becomes kind of important because you have a lot of pitches to deal with and it's possible that they might overlap in a way that's not pleasing to the ear or it's just not what you intended. So rather than steering toward a lot of muffling or really anything uh, anything dramatic to the drum, just trying a head like this that's going to kind of control it just a little bit from the bottom up might actually change the whole way you play the kit. The effect of this is not dissimilar from our previous episode dealing with putting cotton balls in the floor tom, or, or any tom, but we did a floor tom, uh, in that it is a small change that really actually impacts the way that you hit the drum and the way it feels to hit the drum. And I think a lot of the time, the sorts of things that we do to drums are pretty dramatic. You know, like if you think about a snare drum that's wild and you put your wallet on it, and then that's the next sound, there's also putting a credit card on there and there's also putting a handkerchief on there or putting a handkerchief all the way over the top all of these things are like little steps that slightly change the sound and with something like this especially since you can take it off and put it back on later um, because it's a rezo head it's not going to get punished in the same way it's going to last a lot longer um, it's really a worthwhile thing to experiment with um, in the same way that you might experiment with different batter heads or moving between coated and clear and hydraulic and all of that stuff. As a side note, uh, relative to the previous video, uh, we we realized as we played that if, if you have a floor tom flat or a tom flat, um, the cotton balls kind of migrate to the center and really affect the fundamental. And if you were to tilt the drum and collect them at the edge, they have more of an effect on the overtone, kind of like where you would tap it with your finger, you hear different parts of the sound of the drum. This is an interesting, different way to do that kind of effect because no matter what you do with the drum, it's evenly affected all the way across rather than in a sort of nodal way around it. And it's another lovely thing too where traveling, setting up, dragging stuff in and out of the van, it's not gonna change. This is also a good time to talk about how this is one of those things, and there are a lot of these, where you as a player might have an idea about what will happen if you make a certain change to your drums based on people you've seen do it or styles of music you associate it with or players you associate it with. And the reality is that it's really hard to say because there's so many variables involved between the way that you do what you do and the way anyone else does their tuning and setup and everything else. So don't be afraid to try things that seem like they wouldn't necessarily work for you. I didn't think calf heads were gonna work for me for the longest time and now I love them. Um, I never thought that clear batter heads on toms would be a thing I would ever do in my life. And I just bought some because I played some at a backline kit and was like, these sound awesome. So we all have our preconceptions. And one of the things that we're really trying to do here, um, in the first season and now in the second season is break that stuff down and realize that it's just about getting what you want. And it doesn't matter what it looks like or who else does it or who else doesn't do it. You just got to try it and see what it's going to do. All right, what you've all been waiting for, we're going to go back and do a quick back-to-back -back comparison of these grooves with the toms, different bottom heads.
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and click the notification button so that you find out anytime we're releasing a new video. Thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Diderio. And let us know if you have done coated bottom heads, or if you haven't, or what you think might happen if you do, or what happened when you finally did, and see you soon.